working to a brief is what this video is all about. Um, when you work to a brief for a client, it's very, very important that you get the job spot on. Uh, well, if you don't, it's the difference between making money and not making money in this industry. In this particular video, though, I'm under a little bit more pressure. And the reason being is because I've been tasked with creating a picture that's going towards a calendar that um, a particular charity is trying to sell to help them raise money. So there's a lot of weight on my shoulders. But surely working to a brief is easy, isn't it? Now, it's really important for you guys to understand what the brief is from the outset. So the brief to me is simply this. Photograph the Penshaw Monument. Photograph the Penshaw Monument in landscape orientation only. Photograph the Penshaw Monument at night. Photograph the Penshaw Monument at night whilst it's being lit with pink and blue LEDs. Now, all that is fine. That's not really a problem. That's just standard stuff standard stuff for pretty much any competent photographer. The slight issue we've got now is that the pink and the blue LED lights that's lighting up the columns, uh, they're rotating at around about two and a half to three seconds. And of course, the brief is they want to see the pinks and the blue colors on certain columns. Um, now, that means the first challenge now then, of course, is I'm going to be shooting at night, but my, um, my shutter speed is going to be restricted to two and a half seconds probably two seconds, if I'm honest. Um, so that means now my ISO is going to be screaming high. Again, it's not really a problem, but imagine combining a high ISO and still being able to produce an image for print. So there's the brief. We're Googling to make sure that I actually say I am where I am because I'm slightly confused at the moment. He lives here and he's having to Google it. <laughs> How embarrassing. Washington or Sunderland? It's actually Sunderland. <laughs> actually Sun Sunderland. Or, or Hortonley Spring in Sunderland. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, welcome to this week's vlog. Something very, very different this week. Uh, why do I, I always seem to start off a vlog by saying something different this week? But it is very different this week. Um, I'm with John in the background. You might recognize John. John has, well, John has a... Um, a Facebook group and it's called Landscape Photography on YouTube UK. That's right. Correct? Okay, uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. Before we get going, why is it so confusing to say? Why is it <laughs> such a mouthful? Why can you think of a name shorter that we could all understand? I never get it wrong. It's, it's, it's easy. <laughs> to be fair, I suppose if everybody gets it wrong, everybody will talk about it. So there you go. Exactly. Uh, right, okay, so I'm here with John this week. Uh, John has very kindly uh, offered me the opportunity to take a picture that will be used for a calendar. And uh, it's actually October now, and it's going to be used, hopefully, as long as we don't mess up tonight, it's going to be used for next October's calendar, but it's not any old calendar. It's uh, a very special calendar, and it's for a charity to raise money for a very serious cause. Um, John, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, so the charity is for Louis, and basically it's a charity um, for parents who've lost children. Um, it's close to my heart, and I thought the, the group's doing absolutely fantastic. We've got challenges every month. Um, why not try and raise some money out of it? So we're doing the charity calendar, the challenge, win the challenge winners of everyone's competition are going to have each month in it, and then Gary's going to have October. So it's going to be absolutely fantastic, and 100% of profits are going to go to the Four Louis charity. None to me. Oh, I forgot. You dragged me here on false pretenses. No, I'm just joking. No, <laughs> it's, uh, we shouldn't joke about it because it's a very serious cause. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful to try and explain, and especially to try and put it in words as befitting such a a good cause so really what i'd like you guys to do is i'll put the uh, the link uh, to the website or the yep. uh, um, is it really is it, it's a website isn't it, it i'll is. put i'll put the link to the website in the description below so do us a favor guys just click on that and take a look take a read for yourself i don't want to say something that'll be out of turn because it is for a very very serious cause a very serious cause so first of all thanks to john and i'll put uh, john's link to his youtube so his facebook channel in the description as well so pop along and join that if you can Brilliant, thank you very much cool there you go so that's that plug out of the way um but look at this can you see that sky there how fantastic this sunset is but 
it's not about a sunset shot tonight we're here nice and early but it's not about the sunset shot tonight it's about a nighttime shot we're actually photographing a place called Penshaw Monument I'm looking at John just in case <laughs> I say it wrong or I, I say I'm in the wrong place um, Penshaw Monument again is linked to the charity that we've already mentioned um, and it's being lit at night so the October picture that they've requested is for the monument lit at night full of beautiful blues and pinks yes. which uh, which links in quite nicely to the charity so that's it so that's our challenge today so we've been wandering around trying to find a great location um, trying to find something a bit different trying to find something a bit unique uh, and it's always a challenge when you try and do that but fingers crossed we think that we may have nailed it but it's going to be something quite challenging for us tonight more importantly that john challenging for me <laughs> more challenging for john than it is for me because i'm going to be directing john john's going to be running up and down this great big hill if you can see there in the background that great big hill there uh with a torch to try and light up the footpath to use as a leading line but more importantly when we light up the monument we're going to try and introduce some flash and backlight the monument as well so it's a bit of a challenge tonight i'm sure we can do it it might work <laughs> of course it'll work of it'll course work. well the first thing for any good photographer to do is to turn up nice and early and peruse have a look around and look for various compositions so john and i turned up a good three four hours before sunset and we had to wander around now of course me being me i wanted to make sure that i didn't just take the standard shot that everybody takes so i wandered around and i had this great idea and if you look at these pictures now these are just sample shots that i took from various locations and at various compositions and i had a great idea of how to make my image very different At the moment, the angle that we're going to go at, I think personally, is to come far, far away from the monument. Uh, the further away you get from the monument, the lower the monument seems in the sky, the less imposing. But uh, personally, I think it's a, it's a better angle. But more importantly, it's probably an angle that most people wouldn't dream of taking. So that's the plan of action tonight. But we're going to do something a little bit different because um, John is going to be actually in the monument itself. I'm probably going to end up taking a composite I'm going to take one shot for the lights on the monument, another shot with poor old John running uh, a torch up and down the pathway uh, just to add a bit of interest in the foreground. Where's it gone there? I can't see it in the background now. Ah, there you go. Okay, um, so we're going to get John running up and down there with not running up and down too much, just put fingers crossed only <laughs> once. I can hear John chundering in the background now. Uh, that's just to light up the, uh, the, the the steps leading up because I think they make a nice interest in leading line but more importantly then what I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to use off-camera flash technique and I'm going to get John to flash behind the pillars to give it a backlight feel and I think that that will probably work when I composite those images together so it's a unique perspective I'm hoping um, leading lines the lighting of the Colosseum or I'm saying the Colosseum the monument the monument not the Colosseum okay because this actually isn't Rome um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and the um, the monument and combine that with off-camera flash light at the back of it I'm hoping we're gonna get something a, a little unique tonight right okay so John and I doing a recce now then and this is what we reckon um, is the ideal position we've moved slightly further across from a couple of minutes ago and the reason why we came here because the path I'm going to use as a leading line I wanted to push further to the right the path when I was stood in that other field was quite literally coming up through the middle of the frame which I didn't like so I wanted to push that leading line further to the right and so we've simply moved across but better still now we've moved across we've discovered that if we lined the pillars up uh, then we could see right through them and it 
instead of it looking a mess of pillars which might not translate very well in a picture from so far away uh, I think will look fantastic now the composition we've decided on is from I'd say we're probably half a mile away half a mile back would you say but uh, yeah easily yeah. Uh, we're probably easily half a mile away back uh, from the monument we've been all around the monument we've tried to include uh, because it's October we tried to include some autumnal colors but of course um, a there's nothing really around the leaves pretty much are all dead and gone but worse than that because the shot is at night we would then have to light it in, in, in a false way by using flash or a torch or something like that um, and if I'm honest I didn't really fancy that we've been like I said earlier we've been all the way around the monument trying to capture uh, the monument um, from various angles but realistically I wanted to capture it from further back because a it's a unique point but moreover I think um, it's different from what most people will take um, and that's my that's my take on it really yeah I mean obviously shot the obvious shot is obviously to get right up the monument get the top and take the image from there but coming back here it does give a completely different perspective of it yeah and the reason why we think that's the obvious shot is because John turned up last night to do a recce before I got here and what did you do John shot. and he oh, took the obvious shot obvious shots. <laughs> <laughs> by the way there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking the obvious shot uh, it's just because we've got time on our hands and of course I don't just want to take the same shot that everybody else is likely to take um, that's just me uh, I like to challenge myself okay so we've talked about um, where we're actually taking a, the shot from and the composition which is pretty much um, like this on the back of the camera uh, so let me very quickly talk you through my setup now so I've just got the standard uh, my, my go-to Canon 5D Mark III not that that makes any difference whatsoever the most important thing because we're so far away is my 1 to 400 mil lens uh, on the on the front there uh, and we're or I've decided to shoot this at 400 mil, so I'm way, 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 way back with zooming in. And of course, because I'm so far back, um, it's on quite a steep hill. But the further back you go, the more flat that is. Zooming in at 400 mil as well, it'll compress it against the sky. Although I'm not entirely sure what sky we're going to get tonight, and the reason why I'm saying that is because the challenge for us this evening is the the pillars are going to be lit in blues and pinks I believe and they're going to rotate and they're going to move now they're going to change from pink to blue and again this is the reason why John was here last night on his recce they they're going to move between I think about three and five seconds that's all so I have to keep my shutter speed down below that otherwise um, if I take a 30 second exposure for example then the chances are the colors would have changed five or six times in that time scale and in which case it'll just be a white and that's no good so uh, to do that I'm gonna have to shoot wide open to do that I'm gonna have to probably screen my ISO it might be up in a 1600 range we'll find out later on because because I haven't done the recce I'm, I'm not entirely sure how bright the lights are going to be um, on the monument but uh, yeah that's, and we've got to do all this on the mobile phones to each other because John's gonna be up there with a a torch and B the flash yes cool what challenge this is this going to be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got my composition. John's in place, and now I'm in place. The problem is, is the temperature plummeted that night. It was absolutely freezing. And at the time we wanted to take a shot, this low-lying mist just engulfed the very field that we were stood in. My equipment got absolutely sodden wet, and worse still, it was like trying to shoot through fog. So all that planning, the three, four, five hours where John and I have walked around and we've worked this out between us, at the end of the day, it was a no-go right from the off. But I'm still working to a brief, so, you know, I still have to come away with a picture. I can't come back the following night. I just didn't have that time to spare. So <laughs> we very quickly wrapped up. I phoned John. I explained to, to John what was happening. So now it was a whirlwind. We had to run around the building itself and try and find different compositions. And we ended up with two particular compositions. My only annoyance with it is it it's nothing new. It's still a nice picture and it's still fantastic for, um, um, for the calendar. And hopefully the, the, the charity for Louis will uh, be happy with the results in the end as well. 
but it just meant or it just goes to show that when you work to a brief you know you could plan it as much as you want but more often than not you're against the elements and you just have to react so anyway these are the two images that I opted for and these are the two images I post-processed and I sent to John and the image at the end of this video in a few seconds from now is the image that John chose for the calendar. I just want to say a massive thanks to John from Landscape Photography on YouTube UK uh, for giving me the opportunity to be part of this fantastic venture. So well done John. I believe if I'm not mistaken, that John's organized all of this himself. Uh, it's really, it's about trying to create money for this fantastic charity, for the charity that's called For Louis. And it's, it's been done by myself. And also there's lots of photographers that have contributed towards this calendar as well. So I really would appreciate if you could click the link below and take a look. And if you feel it in your heart to do so, then why not contribute and buy the calendar? Thanks a lot.